Hi, welcome to the machine learning introduction lesson of the course. In this lesson, we are going to learn the difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning, the different types of machine learning methods, what is a machine learning pipeline, and the overfitting, a problem that we have to face when we build machine learning solutions. Artificial intelligence is the ability of a machine to mimic the capabilities of the human mind. For example, we can consider machines that can recognize objects, make decisions, or understand the natural language. Machine learning represents a set of AI methods that learn patterns from data without being explicitly programmed. We will see later some applications of machine learning. With deep learning, we consider machine learning algorithms that can automatically extract features from data, an operation that with other machine learning methods requires the human intervention. Let's focus now on the different existing types of machine learning. When using a supervised learning method, the machine learning algorithm will use labeled data. In this way, the algorithm we learn a mapping function between the input data and the corresponding labels. The output of this algorithm is a machine learning model that can be deployed to predict the labels of the new data it will receive as input. An example is a model that learns how to detect if a mail is a spam or not spam, based on its content. Supervised learning methods can be divided into classification and regression. With classification, the output of the model is a category from a discrete set of categories. For example, we can consider a model which predicts if a mail is spam or not spam. In this case, we have a set of two possible output categories. With regression, the output is instead a real value. In this case, we can consider a model that has to predict the price of houses based on their location and size. When we use an unsupervised learning method, we have to work with unlabeled data. The machine learning algorithm has to find interesting patterns in the available data. For example, we can consider a model that groups flowers based on their similarities without knowing their species. Unsupervised learning methods can be divided into clustering, association, and dimensionality reduction. With a clustering solution, we can group data based on common features. As already said before, for example, we can group flowers based on their similarities. With association methods, we can discover interesting relationships between portions of data. For example, we can discover that people that buy the product X tend to buy also the product Y. Finally, dimensionality reduction is used to project high-dimensional data to a lower-dimensional subspace. An example, we can separate a mixed signal into its basic components. Another type of machine learning is called semi-supervised learning. In this case, only a part of the available data has been labeled. Thanks to proper techniques, it is possible to label also the available unlabeled data. This is very useful since collect and label data could be a very expensive and time consuming operation. The last type of machine learning is called reinforcement learning. In this case, we have an agent that interacts with the surrounding environment. It will receive rewards and penalties based on its behavior. Its purpose is to learn by maximizing the rewards and minimizing the penalties. Let's now consider a supervised algorithm. How can we train it? First of all, we have to consider a loss function that is based on the prediction error rate of the algorithm. We also use a dataset. In the case of supervised learning, we know that we have a set of label examples. This dataset can be divided into a training set and a test set. The training set is used to train the algorithm, minimizing a specific loss function. 
The test set is then used to test the generalization capabilities of the algorithm on unseen data. That means on data that were not used during the training process. We have to face the overfitting problem when the model performs very well on the training data but poorly on the test set. This means that it cannot generalize well to unseen data. We can notice overfitting when we have a low error rate on training data but a high error rate on the test data. Overfitting can especially happen when the machine learning algorithm has been trained for too long, when the model is too complex, or when we do not have enough training data. In this figure, we can see an example of binary classification. We consider a classifier that has to detect if an example belongs to the blue class or to the red class. All the dots are examples of the training set. The green line represents an overfitted classifier that fits too closely to the training data. The black line represents instead a regularized classifier that is not perfect on the training data but that better generalize the classification also for unseen data. Let's move on with an introduction to the machine learning pipeline that will be covered in one of the next lessons. This pipeline refers to the typical steps involved when we develop and deploy a machine learning solution. First of all, we have to collect the data we will use to train our machine learning algorithm. Then we apply some pre-processing steps to the data. For example, we can clean data by handle possible missing values or outliers. Hence, we can extract features from the available data. In this way, we can give as input to the machine learning model only the relevant information we can find in the available data. Note that deep learning solutions have become very popular thanks to their ability to automatically extract features from the raw data. The model selection step involves the development and evaluation of different machine learning solutions to find the one which performs best on our data. We can then analyze the predictions of our model to understand whether to change and update any of the previous steps of the pipeline. The last step consists of the deployment of the model that can be used to solve our task in a real-world scenario. The last thing we will talk about in this lesson is the so-called no free lunch theorem. This theorem claims that there is not a universally best model for a specific task. For this reason, as already said before, we have to build different models and evaluate each of them on our data to find the best one for our problem. So, see you in the next session of this course, where we will talk about some very useful Python libraries for machine learning tasks.